Hi, my name is Chris, and this video is called, Where is Love? Love is our natural state of consciousness. It emanates from our core when we're not turned outwards in reaction to the world. It's a resting state, a state that occurs naturally and is entirely natural to us. Love is the place where we are all one, in the sense that we all share a space of consciousness together where there's an absence of friction. So the obvious question is, where is this space, and how do we get there, and why aren't we there right now? The least natural state between two people who appear to be external to each other seems to be love, because we live in a world of fear, pain, conflict, and so forth. So to actually find real and binding love with someone is more of the exception than the rule. Love is something that requires the overlapping of consciousness with someone, which also means that we must suspend our tendency to externalize the minds of others. The overlapping of consciousness is where love occurs, and external life can, in some case, cases, cause us to fixate more on our differences and conflicts, which then in turn prevents us from having the time or inclination to explore the overlap in our consciousness with another person's. In order to explore love with a person you know, or even a person that you don't know, you must first begin by dismissing the external observations that you have about that person. That means that you must remove from your mind their body, class, the way they dress, their mannerisms, and even their personality, and anything else that's externally observable in that person. It's only through the removal of our fixation on the external characteristics of the person that an experience of love with them is possible. Secondly, we have to have a space in which we can share consciousness with this person. For our purposes here in this video, we can begin by imagining an empty glowing space where there are no bodies, only consciousness, so that we can come there as purely a mental form, and another person can come there in a purely mental form, and our consciousness can overlap inside this glowing space. When we fill the space with our consciousness, and then fixate on bringing someone else's consciousness in to share the space with us, the overlap of our consciousness is an experience of love. So let's try this right now. Imagine an empty glowing space, maybe a lighter color like pink or light blue. You see no body, no objects, just this glowing space, and your mind fills this space. Now think about a person, any person that you know, and bring their consciousness in to the glowing space and have it fill that space so that it overlaps your consciousness. Now, just get a feel for what it's like. Feel their consciousness from the inside out. You'll feel an experience of love as well as some other qualities of experience. You might feel that they're consciousness feels somewhat flattened or tense or that it's rather dry or fiery um, or loving or open or could have any number of different qualities but you will definitely feel love where your consciousness and that person's consciousness overlaps. Now try this with a few other people don't be afraid to bring in people you don't like or even actively hate. Make sure you also try to bring in people you like or love. Take some time and get the experience of overlapping with these different people and their consciousness. You'll see that even with people that you hate or dislike, that you will have an experience of love where your consciousness and their consciousness overlaps. Now, 
when you've done uh, trying that, the next thing you want to do is to bring in two people so that your consciousness is simultaneously overlapping with the consciousness of two other people. As you feel this, you'll have the experience of an even more profound level of love. And the more people that you bring in, the more consciousness says that overlap, the stronger the feeling of love that you'll experience. <clears throat> the perception of a world that stands between us and other people is the mental obstruction that prevents us from experiencing love. People configure their consciousness to varying degrees to deal with the external world, either through being aggressive, defensive, open, friendly, what have you. There's a million ways of dealing with the world, and the world usually seems like it's at odds with us. When we go into this uh, glowing space, we experience the inside of the person's consciousness, rather than confronting the wall that a person puts up through their defensiveness or aggression. In this overlapping space, we experience love through the overlapping of their consciousness with our own. The very definition of the physical world is that our potential to experience this overlapping of consciousness is minimized because we are distracted by and fixated on the differences that we seem to have with other people, whether it be personality differences, class differences, race differences, gender differences, and so on and so forth. The overlapping of consciousness in this way doesn't mean that we pick up the person's limitations, their hatefulness, their cruelty, um, their bigotry, or what have you. It's a purely uh, additive process in the sense that we keep all of who we are and all of who they are with no reduction to either of us. It's entirely a process of augmentation and in no way does it reduce us at all. If we were to just throw together uh, a glass of milk and a glass of orange juice, we'd get something disgusting. But if we could mix milk and orange juice in such a way that we had the best qualities of both in a single drink, then we'd have something supernaturally great. In the same way, if we mix our consciousness with someone else's consciousness with no reduction or loss to either of us, then we get something greater than ourselves and that other person. This adding together with no loss to either is what I call additive or additive combination. The ultimate level of love would occur if in this imaginary space we could increase the level to which we merge with the other consciousness in an additive sort of way to its maximum point. In other words, if we did this and increase the additive level of combination with our consciousness and theirs, we would experience a level of love that was even more profound. Everything we think we know about a, another person, any other person, is a lie. By that I mean that the physical world is a lie about what reality is and res in, in our responding to that lie we become what we are not. We become something intensely artificial in our attempt to arrange ourselves in a way that we can bear to exist in this world. A human being isn't shaped like a box, but if you beat someone and starve them day after day after day, eventually they're going to learn to shove themselves into a three-foot square box. That doesn't mean that they're shaped like a box, it means that they've adapted into a very artificial and painful configuration. And this is how it is with many people, that in their painful experiences of life, they become more and more defensive, they lie, they cheat, they steal, they become cruel, they become distorted in their attempt to adapt to life as it presents itself. The whole point of our having physical experiences as spiritual beings is to show us who we are by showing us what we are not. By seeing the antithesis of what we are, the opposite of what we are, the absence of truth, and by reacting to that lie, we learn to appreciate love by seeing that its absence is meaningless. Thank you.